Our story starts in 1846 with the creation of the Oregon Treaty, which was mainly made to stop the dispute between the U.S. and Britain regarding the Rocky Mountains and the Pacific coastline. The treaty stated that the U.S. border should be put at the 49th parallel, which worked well, and there were no issues about it. Except for a couple islands southwest of Vancouver. One of these islands was quite advantageous to hold because of its position in the mouth of the channel, so both countries wanted it. Surprisingly, instead of starting a war that would needlessly enforce the death of tons of soldiers on both sides, America and Britain both made them a chore choice to share. Of course, they both still claimed that the island was theirs alone, but allowing other country citizens to inhabit it was a good start. And then, 1859, Lyman Cutler, an American farmer, was tending to his crops in his field when something so seemingly insignificant would change the course of history for the next couple of months. Oh hey, a pig. Wait a sec. Is that, is that eating my potato? Enter Charles Griffin, the owner of the pig and another farmer on this land. Hey, have you seen my pig? Uh, in my defense it was eating my potatoes. Rubbish, it's up to you to keep your potatoes out of my pig. Here's ten dollars, we can call it even. No! This one interaction would spur the beginning of America's least known, stupidest conflicts, which was about to escalate to massive heights. Griffin ended up reporting Cutler to local British authorities, who threatened to arrest him, which enraged the Americans on the island. So the Americans decided to make a petition. The petition was received by General Harney. Hey, the British are trying to arrest this guy who only committed a tiny amount of animal slaughter. What? I will not stand for this. Send 66 men to the island immediately. Those men all arrived on July 27th, 1859, and upon hearing this news, Governor of British Columbia, James Douglas, thought he might as well send three British warships over just so those pesky Americans know who they're dealing with. Then Harney thought that the British were kind of intimidating with those massive ships. <laughs> Maybe he should send some more people over just in case. And then Douglas said that this lasted for an entire month, until on one fateful day, both armies were ready to begin a war. We will start firing in five, four, three, two. Hey, stop! Admiral Robert Baines, commander in chief of the British Navy, came in and stopped all the madness with one famous line quote, I will not involve two great nations in a war over a squabble about a pig. So, war had been avoided. For now. And by now, I mean a very short time. So, a compromise had to be made fast. General Scott ended up leading the negotiations, and he managed to cut a deal. Both countries would maintain a force of 100 men or less on the island in exchange for no one killing each other until they could finally find out who actually owned the island. And that was how it remained for 12 more years. The island was a very small priority considering the nation was already having a different and more important war with itself. It wasn't until 1872 that both countries finally stopped procrastinating and then ended up just asking the Germans who had the better case rather than sort it out amongst themselves. The Germans sided with the Americans.